Creating a logo animation becomes so much easier when you start with a clear idea in mind. Once you've nailed down your concept, it's just a matter of applying the skills you've learned to bring that vision to life. And here's the cool part. The tools and tricks you'll use are often simpler than you'd expect, but they can have a big impact. That's what makes this process so powerful. Simplicity leads to effective results. The real secret to achieving this is spending more time thinking through your idea rather than rushing into after effects. A well thought out concept will always make the animation process smoother and faster. We can confidently say that this entire approach revolves around problem solving. In today's video, I'm going to guide you through 10 advanced tricks that will help you take your logo from a basic idea all the way to a stunning final reveal. We'll cover everything from the planning phase to executing it step by step. Before we dive in, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. To begin, we need to break down the logo you've designed or the one you're working with into its core elements. In our case, this logo consists of five core elements. It's very helpful to sketch a rough before starting the process. This gives you a clearer vision of what you want to achieve. To prepare the logo for animation, we need to break it down and separate each element into its own layer. I'll also include the vector file in the description, so feel free to download it and follow along. The simplest method I use is to select each element, cut it, and then paste it in place on a new layer. Repeat this process for all the remaining elements, and you'll have everything ready for animation. If you're not familiar with how to do this, Check out my other videos for a step-by-step -step guide. Sometimes the existing logo elements aren't enough to create a professional logo reveal. In these cases, we may need to draw additional illustrations in a similar style or complete the ones we already have in the logo. First, let's select all the layers in our project. Then, we'll use the eyedropper tool to copy the colors from our logo elements. Next, we'll move on to the Pathfinder tool. This is essential for completing any shapes that need to be merged or adjusted. Once we've done that, it's time to clean up our design by removing any unnecessary points. To do this, press A to activate the Direct Selection tool, click on the shape and then press P for Pen Tool, and click on points you want to delete to simplify the shape. If you need to add points, select the Pen Tool and simply click on the path to make adjustments. After you've done this, press A again to return to the Direct Selection tool. This will allow you to adjust the shape further until it looks right. Let's make sure the geometry matches perfectly. Draw a circle stroke and then adjust the top part of our ball illustration by pressing A to select the anchor points and drag them to fit your design. Once you're happy with how everything looks, we can move into After Effects and start animating the text. We'll start by opening the prepared logo file as a composition in After Effects. The first thing we'll do is create shapes from the vector layers. Also, it's important to rename the layers and select colors for better recognition. This will help keep everything organized and make it easier to navigate your project as we begin animating. For a better workflow, let's select any other layers that we won't need right away and click the Shy button to hide them. This way, we can concentrate solely on the text animation without any distractions. To ensure everything works smoothly, let's start by fixing the anchor points. Once that's done, select all the letter layers and press S to bring up the scaling properties. We'll set three keyframes. Start with the first keyframe at 50, the second at 110, and the last one at 100. To make the animation smoother, ease all keyframes by pressing F9. Now let's adjust the graph editor to create a fast start, a deceleration in the middle, and a quick ending. This curve will help achieve that desired effect. Next, choose the first letter layer and add the offset paths effect. Set the amount to zero and create a keyframe for the ending position. Then, add the first keyframe and adjust the amount until the letter completely disappears. After that, copy the offset paths effect and search for the contents of the other letters. Select the contents by pressing shift and clicking on them. Then simply paste the effect. Make sure the timeline indicator is at the beginning to position it correctly. Finally, offset the layers for a more random appearance and let's see how it turned out. To complete our first section, let's animate the secondary text using position keyframes, which you can access by pressing P. Move the letters from up to down to create this effect, with the first keyframe positioning the text above and the second keyframe placing it below. Adjust the graph editor accordingly for smoother animation. Next, press T to bring up the opacity properties and set two keyframes. Start with 0% opacity and then transition to 100% opacity to reveal the text. 
To create the line animation, press G to activate the pen tool and start drawing a smooth path. Take your time here, as adjusting the curves carefully will make the animation look much more realistic and fluid. You want the path to follow a natural, flowing motion. Pay close attention to how the curve is shaped. If it's too sharp or too straight, it may appear unnatural. It's also important to make sure the end of your path is positioned just above the letter S, because that's where our ball animation will begin. This starting point is crucial for making the transition smooth when we bring in the animated ball later. Now let's activate the ball layer and use the eyedropper tool to match the stroke color with the ball. Once you've done that, adjust the stroke value to 18 to give it the right thickness. This step will help the ball look cohesive with the other elements. Then search for the cap and select the round cap from the cap option. Next, search for the length setting and adjust the end length value to 100 and the start length to 65 to achieve the desired style. Next, add the trim paths effect to the layer. Set two keyframes for both the end and start properties, adjusting their values from 0 to 100. This will create the animation effect making the stroke gradually reveal itself along the path. Next, ease the keyframes by pressing F9 and open the graph editor to adjust the animation. For the start keyframes, modify the graph to create a slower start and a faster finish. Then, do the same for the end keyframes, but this time, adjust the graph for a faster start and a slower finish. Both graphs should have curves that reflect these changes, ensuring smooth and natural movement. Finally, select the last keyframes and move them further along the timeline to slow down the overall animation, giving it a smoother and more gradual finish. Now, select all the letters except for the line and move them further along the timeline to adjust their timing. This will help create a more synchronized and cohesive animation, ensuring that everything flows together smoothly. The last step is to duplicate the line layer. Then, select the new layer and change its color to white and bring this white line layer under the original one and offset the layers to create a nice layered effect. We need to manipulate some letters from the text to create a flying and landing effect. For the flying point, we'll use the letter S. First, create a null object and parent the letter S to the null object. Next, press Y to adjust the anchor point, moving it to the bottom of the letter. Now, press S to bring up the scale properties. Set the first keyframe at the original scale then move the timeline indicator forward and adjust the scale so that the letter S squishes slightly by scaling it vertically using the red box. After that, add the next keyframe and adjust the scale again to create an overshoot effect by making the letter slightly larger than normal. For the last keyframe, simply copy the first one and paste it to bring the letter back to its original size. We're going to apply the same process to the letters N and E. Just like we did with the letter S, create null objects and parent layers to it, adjust the anchor points, and add keyframes to create the flying and landing effects. Once you've set the keyframes, don't forget to adjust the graph editor for each letter. This will help smooth out the animation, making the movements more dynamic and polished. Now that our letters are ready for the show, we can move on to animating the ball. This will bring everything together and add a nice touch to our animation. Remember the ball we created earlier for our animation? Now it's time to bring it into action. Start by selecting the position keyframes for the ball. Set the first keyframe so the ball begins over the letter S. Then set the end keyframe at the position where you want it to bounce. Next, ease the keyframes by pressing F9 to smooth out the movement. After that, press G to select the pen tool and use it to adjust the motion path, creating an arch that gives the ball a natural bouncing effect. This will help give the ball a realistic and dynamic movement. Let's adjust the length of the composition to five seconds. To do this, go to the composition settings, set the duration to five seconds, and make sure everything fits within this new timeline. Now let's bring back the original logo element and set it in the correct position. Add another position keyframe for the ball, and adjust the motion path so it flows smoothly. At this point, the bird in the logo will catch the ball and move its head back to the initial point. Make sure to adjust the graph editor to create a smooth and realistic motion that shows a natural catch. This step adds a dynamic finishing touch to the animation. Let's quickly adjust the timing of our stroke animation. 
we can move the keyframes backward in the timeline to match the pace of the ball in text animations. Now let's add the offset paths effect to the ball. First, adjust the offset value to zero to eliminate any stroke. Set a keyframe at this point. Next, create another keyframe at the starting point, adjusting the offset value to form a small circle. This will give the ball a slightly growing and shrinking effect, which makes the bounce feel more dynamic. Once you've adjusted the offset paths, check the ball's position to match the moment it bounces. You want to ensure that the effect is aligned with the bounce for a realistic motion. Now, with both the path and the offset dialed in, let's see how it all comes together. Let's start by bringing in the head, beak, and original ball layers. Fix the anchor points for each of these layers to the corner of their respective elements. Next, create a null object and parent all three layers to the null object. Adjust the anchor point of the null object to the top of the bird's head to ensure smooth movement. Now, press R to access the rotation properties. Set a keyframe at the final position, where the bird will be after catching the ball. Then, move the timeline indicator to the beginning and adjust the starting rotation, so the bird's movement matches the ball's catch. Finally, ease the keyframes by pressing F9 to smooth the rotation, giving it a natural flow as the bird catches the ball. Let's now cut the ball layer to complete the morphing process with the original logo element. Trim the ball layer at the point where it needs to transition into the original logo. At this point, the ball will seamlessly merge into the logo element, completing the morphing effect. Make sure to adjust the timing carefully so that the transition looks smooth and natural. Once done, play it back to check how the final morph looks Let's animate the wing. First, bring in the wing layers and color them pink to make them easier to identify. Next, search for the CC Bender effect and apply it to the first wing. Adjust the top and base anchor points of the effect to match the top and bottom of the wing. Now, set a keyframe for the current bender position. Press U to reveal all keyframes. Move the timeline indicator to the start position and adjust the bender amount to negative 66. Ease the keyframes and adjust the graph editor for fast start and slow end. After that, apply the offset paths effect and adjust the value to zero to remove any extra stroke. Add a keyframe for this, just like before. Then, move the timeline indicator to set the starting keyframe and adjust the offset to make the wing disappear. Repeat these steps for the other wing. Now. Let's check how the wings look. Finally, we've reached the last section of the tutorial, the final reveal. Start by bringing up the stroke layers we'll animate. Select the pen tool and adjust the stroke thickness to overlap the original design. Carefully draw over the existing stroke, making sure your new stroke overlaps perfectly with the original. Once you're satisfied with the stroke, add a trim paths effect. Set the end property from 0 to 100 to animate the stroke, revealing it progressively. After that, ease the keyframes by pressing F9 and adjust the motion using the graph editor to create a smoother start and finish. For the last step, choose the matte option for the new stroke layer, so the animation will apply to our original stroke. Now let's apply the same steps to the other stroke layers. Once all the stroke layers are animated, let's review the entire composition and see how the final reveal looks. Before we finalize the animation, let's add a camera layer to make the reveal more dynamic. First, ensure that all layers are set to 3D by enabling the 3D switch for each one. Now go to the camera layer settings, find the zoom option, and add two keyframes one for the starting position when the logo animation begins, and another for the final reveal. Ease the keyframes by pressing F9, then adjust the graph editor to create a smooth zoom effect. At the start of the animation, the camera should be slightly closer to the logo, and as the reveal progresses, the camera will zoom out, giving it a more dynamic and professional look. Now, with the camera effect in place, 
our logo animation is complete. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. I'll see you in the next one.